Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. I'm on Rodney Street in Liverpool and behind me is the house where William Ewart Gladstone was born on the 29th of December uh, 1809. So Rodney Street is named in honour of uh, an 18th century admiral in the Royal Navy um, and um, uh, so, so this street was built not very long before, before Gladstone was born. Um, and then Rodney was later ennobled as Lord Rodney and in the House of Lords he was a tireless advocate of the cause of maintaining slavery. So he's now detested and some have even advocated for the street to be renamed because of uh, his infamous memory. But uh, the Gladstone family were admirers of Lord Rodney because they made um, some of their money from the trade in human beings. Um, and mainly forcing people to work without pay in the Caribbean. So um, William Ewart Gladstone was not the elder son of his family. His, he had an elder brother, um, John Gladstone. His father was Sir John Gladstone. Um, originally the Senate was actually Gladstones with an, e, with an S on the end, and it was Edwin Gladstones in time. So um, Gladstone, as in the famous Gladstone, his parents were both um, from Leith, that was the port of Edinburgh, not actually incorporated into Edinburgh until 1920. Um, and uh, William Hewitt was very proud to say there was not a drop of English blood in his veins. His ancestors and ancestresses were completely Scots as far back as could be traced. So his father had done very well as a merchant, um, having left school in his teens and um, been trading with the, with the Hanseatic ports in the Baltic and later uh, owning plantations in the Caribbean. And uh, when uh, servitude was eventually abolished, um, something like 30 million pounds was paid in recompense, not to the victims of slavery, but to its perpetrators, those who owned uh, their fellow people uh, as mere chattel. Um, so, uh, and the Gladstones were the single biggest recipients of this payout. Um, anyway, so it was later said of Gladstone, I'm not sure by whom, um, Oxford on top but Liverpool underneath. So he went to Eton at the age of 12, uh, where his brothers also attended, and uh, he was very distinguished at classics, not so much into games, a very serious-minded boy, brave beyond his years, seldom seen to crack, crack a smile, a good friend of um, uh, the Earl of Nottingham, who was heir to be, I think, Duke of Newcastle. He then went up to Christchurch, Oxford, and he came up in December. These days, obviously, university terms begin first week in October. You could really begin any time of the year. So he went up to Oxford, Christchurch, the grandest college of all, and he kept a diary from his, his, his school days, and it's incredible uh, in its uh, detail, recording particulars as so much, how much lines of which Greek poet he'd read, and how many pages of which uh, Roman author, and so forth, and who he sat beside at luncheon. Uh, so he was uh, intensely religious from his uh, earliest boyhood, and uh, he said Christianity was his pole star, even thought he might have a vocation as an Anglican clergyman. So those parents had been communicants of the Church of Scotland. When they came to England, they conformed themselves to the Church as by law established. Um, and so uh, he was at the Oxford Union Society. He wasn't president, was treasurer. That's a debating society of Oxford University. And uh, he was a stalwart uh, advocate of the maintenance of slavery, as his family had a vested interest in keeping people in bondage um, and also he was an inveterate and very obscurantist opponent of the cause of reform, thought that only the propertied classes should be permitted the franchise and said we mustn't extend suffrage to the lower orders, even including what we now call the middling classes. So we're multi-millionaires by modern standards, the Gladstone family. So he went down, he got himself elected for a proper borough, he was a Tory. I can't remember of, of, of who said of him, he was the rising hope of the stern unbending Tories. Uh, anyway, I shan't um, adumbrate his entire parliamentary career, but it was very distinguished, was in the cabinet, um, was uh, against um, uh, Catholic emancipation, but uh, later changed his tune. The Corn Laws is when he, when he really changed. He was a Peelite, and long was to Robert Peel. He was about the third of the Tory party, Conservative party, as they sort of call themselves, who split away from the Conservative party on the issue of repealing the Corn Laws, these laws about an import tax on corn to, keep, to inflate the price of corn artificially. So he began to agree with sort of um, laissez-faire a bit more and the Peelites were in alliance with the Whigs for a while and they eventually formed the Liberal Party. Only ever one Peelite Prime Minister, the Earl of Aberdeen. So um, he married Catherine, I forgot her name actually, <laughs> quite young and had a, a, um, a, a race of children. They had their country house at Harden in Wales, just over the border, quite close to Liverpool. Harden spelled H-A-W-A-R-D-N. They sometimes flew the Harden kite. So he used to like to um, uh, used, used to like to chop wood, but in post-Freudian times, we might uh, um, uh, interpret that as sort of a symbolic um, uh, self-emasculation, because he was he was grappling with his guilt over his uh, um, uh, carnal desires for other females, not just his good wife. 
and he used to try to minister to fall, to fallen ladies, bringing home these ladies at night for prayer meetings at Number 10 Downing Street when he's Prime Minister. And you can imagine what uh, his political foes made, made, made for that. But somebody quipped, William, when you're saving fallen women, save one for me. So not too much into charity, but uh, and, and he'd been Chancellor Exchequer and he believed in candle ends and cheese pairings. It was a great moral evil to waste too much. I will always back the ma masses against the classes, he would say. They don't rhyme in that sort of accent. Uh, but these are people's William, some people called him. He said that wealth, birth, status are at least as important as any of the virtues. So it seemed to be a crashing snob at some time. But then later on was, it, uh, was advocating almost the cause of democracy later on. Uh, um, so he's Prime Minister four times, had been against Home Rule for Ireland, famously converted and became Prime Minister. My mission is to pacify Ireland. and. Um, um, in um, the early 1870s, I uh, hoped to bring in the first Land Act and so on. It was only in the 1880s when um, he, he formed some sort of alliance with the Home Rule Party in Ireland. But uh, Lord Randolph Churchill, Conservative former Chancellor, said, the Orange Card will be the one to play. Please God, it'll be the ace and not the two. So for completely cynical reasons, the party political reasons, the Conservatives set their face against Home Rule. Had they not done so, history might have been exceedingly different. Anyway, Gladstone failed to get through the Home Rule through the Camels the first time. A lot of his party decamped Liberal Unionists. They formed an alliance with the Conservative Party until formally merging into them about um, 30 years later. And then um, 1892, um, he's back as Prime Minister, and he got Irish Home Rule through the House of Commons, but it was voted down in the House of Peers. And then he decided to retire as Prime Minister. He'd been Prime Minister until the age of 85. That'd be like a super centenary these days. He lived on until 1898. So that was him, a towering intellectual author of many books, such as on the state's relationship with the, with the churches, um, a highly uh, educated uh, gentleman, someone who evolved very greatly. He started out as a reactionary and uh, was, a, was a liberal, um, perhaps not the most ra radical liberal by, right by the end of his life. Um, uh, didn't believe in, um, uh, what was the word, graduated taxation, progressive taxation. So he believed in a flat tax. Would have preferred to abolish income taxes, just some sort of hangover, a war wartime issue of exigency or measure of exigency that no one had um, been able to uh, do away with but his aspiration was to abolish it when the situation uh, was meet and uh, allowed for it. So uh, that's enough about Gladstone and his uh, son Herbert was a prominent MP, his grandson too was a member of parliament, was killed in the in the um, First World War. One of his descendants was known to my family known as Xenophon as in the figure from um, ancient Greek mythology. That's just a little bit about um, the very celebrated William Ewart Gladstone, who was born in this very self-same edifice you see opposite me. Okay, thank you so much for donations. Please send it to me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. That's all small letters. Toodaloo.